What's going on everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you a look at Pacific Drive, an interesting little game that describes itself as a survival adventure, though truth be told, I think this game is a little hard to describe as it is pretty unique. It initially popped up onto my radar as part of Steam's Next Fest back at the start of February, with a few people mentioning it to me and after looking into it for myself, I decided that it was something I wanted to check out personally, but given how different it was from the rest of the channel, I took my time in getting there as this game released back on the 22nd. But let's talk a little bit about what this game is. Pacific Drive sees us trapped in what is called the Olympic Exclusion Zone, as this game is set on the Olympic Peninsula in Washington State in the U.S., which was quietly sealed off in an alternative American history. This game takes place in 1998, where our character is pulled into this particular zone when traveling nearby, only to discover the very bizarre situation inside. Basically, everything inside the Exclusion Zone is subject to what they call the instability which is some sort of force that destroys and rewrites the terrain and kind of general laws of reality every so often, which leads to all sorts of stalker-esque anomalies. Our goal, as you might imagine, is to simply escape, and right away we stumble upon an old station wagon, which turns out to be what they call a remnant, some sort of powerful object that bonds to a person, slowly driving them insane while they become more obsessed with it, which is where all of the survival-esque mechanics come in, as the car is integral to everything we do, hence the Pacific Drive title. We're going to be upgrading this thing, headlights, wheels, individual panels, etc., all to increase what it's capable of. Later on, you can even start installing things that give the car proper abilities, and provided it's in good condition, it will protect you from some of the more problematic anomalies you're going to run into, or just straight up radiation, as the car itself is somewhat supernatural in nature. So, our goal is basically to use the car to find our way through the ever-changing landscape of this exclusion zone so we can escape. We do this by going on drives, or runs basically, where we're going to be scavenging materials that we're going to need for crafting and upgrading and also simply repairing our vehicle, as we do have to do things like keep the fuel topped up and even potentially remove supernatural quirks, as they're called, which can cause malfunctions in your car. On top of that, though, we also have to dodge anomalies the entire time, which can be all sorts of things, many of which will be hazardous to your health. Our character can step outside the car and handle everything that we need to, but things like radiation and the anomalies can harm you, and you can absolutely die. Now, as you've probably guessed, each drive you take happens to be procedurally generated. You'll travel to individual areas, potentially multiples of them, and due to the shifting landscape and things, you'll encounter new stuff every time, be that crazy weather, the landscape itself, the different remnants you might run into that aren't your car. Perhaps the most serious, though, are the storms. Storms are the instability, basically, coming through and changing the landscape, which will absolutely kill you, and you'd like to escape it somehow. Now, each run allows you to map new routes through the place to give you access to general areas, each with their own modifiers and things, depending on where they are in the zone itself. But when you can progress no farther, you'll eventually need to head back to the one safe zone, which is naturally the auto body shop that you are running things out of, and this is going to see you gathering certain nodes on the current map you're in. These nodes are going to charge up your way back home. Doing so, however, triggers a big anomalous storm that you have to outdrive to make it back to the shop and then do all your upgrading and repairs before heading out again. Combine that with a relatively interesting story with all of its supernatural elements, and I think you've got a game that is very unique, if nothing else. I can honestly say that I've never played anything quite like this. Obviously, I've played around with some of the concepts here in other games, but this particular amalgamation of them feels unique to me, which is why I've been having so much fun with it and why I wanted to share it with you guys, even if it is a bit late. That said, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. I have encountered a few minor bugs, as have many other people in its Steam reviews, but the game itself does retain a very positive rating. Though, what I've encountered mostly has been terrain bugs, getting stuck in things, the car kind of behaving weirdly on certain terrain, which I imagine has a lot to do with the procedural generation nature of some 
some of it. And on top of that, unfortunately, you cannot save mid-run, which is a bit frustrating, but I imagine will likely get sorted out pretty quickly. But on the positive side of things, I would say that this game has a ton of difficulty modifiers. This game is going to be as difficult or as easy as you would like it to be, I imagine, due to your ability to change just an incredible amount of different features, and it also has a ton of accessibility stuff. You can actually change your field of view for both in the car and your first person walking around mode, which I thought was pretty cool. And then the game loop itself is simply very rewarding, and it always feels like you're progressing towards upgrading your car and learning more about what's going on in this zone. So with all of that in mind, I've been having a ton of fun playing this a little bit in my own free time. And while I don't expect to do a full review, I do plan on continuing playing this for myself, as it's been a pretty unique experience for me. And for its full asking price of $30 US, I don't think that's a terrible deal. All of that said, though, let me know what you think about this title down in the comment section below, which of course means to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz, but regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.